Hey, how's it going guys? Today, I'll be sharing with you guys my thoughts on NHL 21. So yesterday, I was invited to the NHL 21 technical test, which is basically the same thing as a beta, except it's more closed off. For that reason, I'm not allowed to show any gameplay, and you also have to sign up a few weeks in advance, so um, if you guys are asking how do you get to play, unfortunately, you can't until the release date. But anyway, let's get to talking about my experience with the game. Alright, so first of all, what I was given to play in the technical test is only Online Versus and World of Chell. World of Chell still has the same game modes uh, as it usually does, you know, Pro-Am, 1s, 3s Eliminator, and EASHL, Clubs, and Drop. Um, the EASHL, if you're in a club, you can now do a practice with your teammates. Hey, that's pretty cool, I haven't been able to try that out yet though, but you can match make a practice instead of a traditional game and just for some quick feedback as i've heard from other people that there's only one puck in the open practices um that's something that ea should change maybe throw in a few more pucks maybe a puck pile or a puck per person i don't know that might get a little complicated with the goalies focusing on two different people but really you don't want to be waiting for a pass just to play with the puck in practice mode and speaking of practice, if you customize your loadouts in World of Chell, like say a dangler or a grinder or whatever it is you use, you can test it right away. You don't need to uh, go into a game and try it out then. You can uh, go into a free skate with the loadout you just made. So that's where most people were playing to try out the new Deke moves, such as the Svechnikov, the Kucherov, and all the little chip moves was what I was playing with mostly. But anyway, I'm sure you guys want to hear a lot about that Svechnikov. Let me tell you, you're not going to get scored on by the Svechnikov. Cup. I probably tried it 150 times or so. Couldn't get the... Okay, I got the puck off the ice once, but not, like, back in front of the net. I, it got, like, maybe six inches off the ice, fell right back down. So don't even worry about that being exploited. Um, I was going to say make it more common, but do we really want that? I mean, I mean... There's some debate there, I guess, because you're not really going to be in that situation all too often, and if it's just going to fall down every time, what's the point of it even being in the game, right? If you can't get the puck off the ice to do it as a dangler with 95 deking, why is it in the game? Why'd they market it? Why'd they waste time doing it if it's if you can't do it at all? Exactly. And I'll just touch on the Kucherov real quick. I mean, it's a pretty easy deke to do, not so much to score. I've scored a few times, but... Um, you have to get the timing and angle pretty much perfect. Uh, the thing I'm hoping with the Kucherov is since it's a five-hole goal, make five-hole goals more common. In NHL 20 or pretty much every past NHL game, five-hole goals were not nearly as effective as they are in real life. And, I mean, you want five-hole to be an option. The last thing I'll touch on with the new move sets that they've given you is all the chip moves. You can chip it to yourself off the boards or chip it in open ice into an open area. Um, you can slide along the boards as McDavid did in the trailer as you can see right here. Gameplay wise, these chip moves and slip moves are the best additions that EA has made to this new generation of NHL. Um, it makes the game more, feel more realistic, the mobility is more natural, and my perfect combination for the most realistic game, uh, gameplay-wise, of course, would be the NHL 19 bit of skating, where you were able to build speed off crossovers, more agility if you were a little guy. For some reason, I don't know why they took it out, and every tuner further into NHL 19 felt less like the ultimate beta. Um, if, you, if they were able to combine that type of skating with this type of mobility, then it would feel amazing. And I've got a bad feeling that they're going to be nerfing these little chips further on because some people are arguing that it's kind of like a self-sauce where, in my opinion, I don't see it. You can easily just take the body. It doesn't, it doesn't really work like a self-sauce. So I hope they keep that in, keep it just as effective because I find it to be almost perfect um, if you do it in the right situations, of course. Also... I forgot to mention you could bank it off the net, that has made really nice plays and you do it the same way, you just chip it off the boards. Before I talk about the presentation, I'll give you guys a quick rundown on a few um, more minor things. Uh, 
the AI in World of Chell is better. They have better positioning, they make smarter plays, but still I would suggest for you not to call for the puck from them because they'll still put it into interception lanes or just not put enough juice on it. So let them play on their own. Most of the time they will make a good play, a good pass, um, the more obvious play, right? They'll do what you want them to do for the most part if you don't call. Um, they're still gonna um, be making some more brain dead defense moves, so you're still gonna have to scream at them a little bit. The goaltending has seen some improvements for the most part, but not in the way I would like it to be. They are seeming to stop more of the regular shots and snipes that you would score, which was my favorite type of goals, um, but now they're stopping that. So it's making the metas more an amplified option, and you're gonna be seeing more of those goals go in. When I say the metas, I'm talking about the backhand, forehand, backhand on every penalty shot, every breakaway, or even just skate to the boards, go across the crease. But I mean, mostly I'm talking about the backhand, forehand, backhand, because that thing's been in since NHL 17, and it's not taken out. The one hand tuck has been uh, nerfed, so you don't need to worry about that, like watching it softly go in on your goalie as he just watches it inevitably go in. Um, you won't be seeing that. But the backhand, forehand, backhand really needs to get taken out of the game because I don't want to see the same breakaways and penalty shots every time. Let's get some creativity. Let's get some realism in the ways we score. Cross creases. I know you guys complain about the cross creases, but they should be going in more often than not because in real life, that's a very good opportunity. I think that's balanced. But the backhand, forehand, backhand is my biggest complaint with the goalies. And maybe give a little more leeway on the regular shots. Maybe the 14 inches off the ice type of stuff. The snipes, top corn. And finally, I'll just talk about the presentation. The presentation, I was a little disappointed because it still looks pretty much identical to 20 and 19 and 18 with the little widgets that highlight and show a background behind it. Maybe we can get something a little different there. World of Chell looks pretty much the same, um, but there are some minor changes. Instead of you going into it and seeing all the four modes like separately with their icons, you now have uh, Pro-Am as a text field, like included with your uh, customize, your club, your everything that you would normally see. But instead, Proem has a text box, Multiplayer has a text box which includes 1s and 3s, and Drop in EASHL, and then Clubs is a text box which takes you to 3v3, 6v6, whichever one you choose, and a few other more minor buttons. Um, there's no soundtrack, so don't ask me about that. Uh, I was just listening to the menu music, which is the same as NHL 20. Um, used to that, since I turned off the garbage soundtrack in 20. And uh, final thing is that they have this neon green color for pretty much everything. I mean, I don't really know how to explain what is neon green, but just think of it like if you play on Xbox, you can choose what color your dashboard is. So every icon you're on on dashboard is say green or blue or red, whatever it is you chose. But in NHL 21, every widget that you've selected or every um, option in intermission is highlighted as neon green. I don't like that, it's distracting, so I hope they can give you an option to customize or give it a more subtle color, not neon green, please. But yeah, this is uh, pretty much my first impressions after a day of playing NHL 21's beta. Uh, I might make another more detailed video once it's over, but let me know how well of a job I did explaining my feedback and criticisms about the game. I'll see you guys in the next one.